Somebody can feel this name in, in a certain situation happen to him. Like we mentioned a song last time. So somebody tried to be in the sea and the waves were so strong or something and he felt that he's going to die or somebody was on board while the flight was going up or something and he felt like, you know, like a, too many shakes and bumps and clumps or something like that and it would fall down. And he remembered the name of Al-Samad. So somebody had an experience with the name of Al-Habib. Somebody had that experience? Like I have seen one video before, like a very small boy, like maybe like like that that tall, very very short. And subhanAllah, there is a, like a big cart, a big tra trailer, you know the trailer, the big trailer, it was coming. And subhanAllah, that boy, he fall down, Allah, by, by the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he slipped, so he fall down in his face. And that trailer, because he's so small, you know, the driver cannot see him, and that trailer passed over him, just between the wheel, and after it passes, that boy stand up again and nothing happens. If that boy was standing up, he would, he would die. Have you seen like these videos? It's too many. Yes. You can find one, one person, he's standing in front of like a bar, a steel bar, and the big crash happening, like a big accident, and it, the car is coming to him, and this bar will prevent this car to hit him. It's, it, and we say like, ah, it was very close, right? Very close to die or something. Somebody felt like this experience? Yes. Yes, yes please, I would like to listen. Yes, yes we have like three, three hands. Get up. So please, brother. I remember now one situation happened to me with my sheikh. Uh, we were after Fajr in the car, and uh, Rahimahullah, uh, I was uh, memorizing Quran with him. And uh, we stayed together in the car after Fajr. And uh, it was there was a very big fog, you know, that you can't see very well. And subhanAllah, uh, I decided, but I don't know who told me that, to put the car in a different place. Uh, just, just from the side a little bit. And uh, suddenly, we found a truck coming very fast. And <laughs> it was certainly going to hit us if we were on the same place oh, before. Well, so, um, 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 yes. Yes. Yeah, this is what I remember. SubhanAllah. I have one example as well. From, from, look, SubhanAllah, the, the, the examples will come. SubhanAllah. I have one example. It was in Egypt. So one person he was living with his wife and small boy. So, and he was a thief, that person. So he went inside when the people were too sleepy. And he, he know that if he moves something, maybe the first one would move up, it would be the child. So he take the child, he took the child, and he put him outside. And he like, hide himself in a certain place. So that boy, he felt something, so he, 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 he wake up and he start to cry. His parents, they listen to him, they hear a crying outside, so they went, both of them, they went outside. Both of them, they went outside to check what's happening, why he went out. So that thief, he saw that now I'm, I'm, the, the room is empty and everything is nice for me. All of a sudden, the room crashed oh. over him. SubhanAllah, and he passed away, he died inside that place. The, the, the situation happened in Egypt, SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. So those people, they should remember the name of Allah, al hafiz And Brother Abdul Aziz and this Sheikh, MashaAllah, they should at that time remember the name of Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, al hafiz at that time. Because SubhanAllah, if he stayed in the same place, this trailer, like that. But he just tilted a little bit to the left or the right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. Who revealed to him? Who told him to go to that place? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Hafiz. Yes, brother, if you would say something. So I was uh, with my brother when I was uh, going to high school. Allah so, uh, We were like in a pickup truck. Uh -huh. uh, me and my brother. So front of the school, small child uh -huh. uh, entered, entered the, the car, the pickup. Allah uh -huh. The car passed. On him, but he stopped oh. yeah, after a while. Then the boy, nothing happened to him. So how? But he would be very big. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Subhanallah. So in that case, we should remember the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the protector. 
you understand now the meaning, right? So let's let's continue. Somebody can understand, I know that it's in Arabic, but somebody can understand something here from these illustrations? Always we feel like our beloved people are in danger, right? We feel like our family in danger. Our sultan, our boys or our children, they are in danger. Maybe our money or something are in danger. So don't think a lot about that, subhanAllah. Everything in danger. If you just cross the road, you are in danger, subhanAllah. So just think about that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this yellow, yellow mark, we need to renew our iman. We need to recover ourselves. We need to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hafiz This is the meaning of, of that word, al hafiz Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a conclusion of this article. So Allah subhanahu wa we have here in this book, يَحْفَظْ عَبْدَهُ لِذَلِكَ نَقُولْ دَيْمًا You know that dua. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he guided us what kind of statement we should say in order to protect our soul. So we, we have this dua, we can, remember, we can memorize it, or even we can say it during morning and evening. Allahumma ihfazni min bayni yadayya wa min khalfi, wa ayya meeni wa ayya shimali wa min fawqi, wa a'udhu bi azamatika min wa ta'ala min tahti. What the meaning of that? Oh Allah, you know it starts from here. Oh Allah, protect me min bayni yadayya wa min khalfi, from my front and my back. Look at these marks, from my front and my back. Wa ayya meeni wa ayya shimali, my right side and my left side. ومن فوقي and from my upside وأعوذ بعظمتك أن أغتال من تحتي and oh Allah I ask refuse to you that I can be like killed or something or I can be taken or I can be like you know not protected from my penis from my, my, my pillow part you understand? so now you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from all sides that was a dua the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he taught us to say that dua so I, I, I really like enjoy myself and you, my brothers, to remember this dua. Even if you cannot remember it in Arabic right now, maybe you can try to say it in English. Now you could understand it. That the Prophet Muhammad he, should, he, he used to say, Oh Allah, protect me from my front and my back, my right and my left, over me and below me, something like that. This is the meaning of that dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He protect our eyes and our hearing. Our hearing, hearing sensation and, and our you know, like seeing sensation. Somebody knows that some people who do not have, cannot see or something, like blind people who cannot yeah. see or something. All of us, we know those people. Yeah. Have you tried to imagine yourself without seeing? Like you cannot see? Okay. Have you tried that? No. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Difficult, right? <laughs> and even without hearing. Have you, have you tried to think about that before? SubhanAllah. So that the al hafil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting our eyes and our ears for us. And there is one ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُ مِنْ أَخَبَ اللَّهُ سَمْعَكُمْ وَأَبْصَارَكُمْ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ مَنْ إِلَهُ الْغَيْمُ مَنْ إِلَهُ الْغَيْمُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِهِ What the meaning of that? قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ Haven't you seen? إِنْ أَخَبَ اللَّهُ سَمْعَكُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken your hearing, وَأَبْصَارَكُمْ and your sight, وَخَتَمَ عَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, من إله غير الله who ever than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who like any other lord except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يأتيكم به can return it back to you somebody can do that? this is the understanding of Al-Hafid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting our eyes it's like normal you know? we wake up every day we can see subhanallah sometimes you know when you switch on the light you feel like a pain in your eyes so you can see but others they don't see anything everything is black their life is black, totally black. And even they are not connected with people. They cannot hear anything. So this is one of the deep meaning of the understanding of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Hafid. Try to understand this, this meaning. One of the most important things that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi used to say in hadith as well. Ya muqallib al-qulub wal awsar fadbit qalbi ala deen. You know that. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith that the hearts of people between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changing those hearts as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish. So maybe in the morning some, somebody will wake up a believer and he, when it comes at the evening, he will be a disbeliever. And the opposite. Somebody will wake up as a disbeliever and by the end of the day will be a believer. So nobody knows. Do not be proud of yourself. Do not be proud of your prayers that you are coming to the masjid every time or something. Do not be proud that you are, mashallah, a very good lecturer or something. Do not be proud of that. Everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to understand that everything is coming from the protector, the al hafiz Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping for us. Somebody knows somebody convert, 
left Islam, he has converted, not reverted. Because revert is coming back to Islam. Somebody knows somebody who converted? Left Islam? Somebody know someone of that? There is. Someone, but there is. Not directly. We, we don't have to mention the name. I yeah, just, I we need the experience. I know. Uh, is that uh, not directly converted, but uh, his activity, his... Uh, no. He has some doubts. Yeah, yeah. Right? Doubts and then just go away from the practice of Islam. Then yes. So now his heart is like, you know, yeah, is yeah. like threatened. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I, I know, maybe very know, soon he will no. be infected. Right? Maybe very soon his heart will be penetrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the shirk or something, or by disbeliever in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe it happened, subhanAllah. Nobody knows. Wallahi Azim, subhanAllah. That's why one of the most, one of the most important uh, uh, ayat or the, the beginning of the prayers the Prophet Muhammad Sallam used to say during the khutbah, the first ayat, Ya ayyuha al-Ladina amanu taqu Allah haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuha al-Ladina amanu, all you who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna, never ever die, illa except Muslim. Just only Muslim. You understand? Do not ever die but Muslim. And Yusuf alayhi salam, he made one dua. What did he say? Yusuf alayhi salam, tawaffani. Muslim. He said just Muslim. So the biggest ni'mah that Allah has given to us is Islam. So one of the understanding of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Hafiyyu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting our hearts from any kind of conversion or something to leave the Islam. You understand? Finally, we'll be the losers. Finally, we'll be the loser. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he doesn't need anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need in, in, even the worshipping of the whole universe. It doesn't increase Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing. And if the whole people disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it does not decrease anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's properties. You understand? SubhanAllah. Yes. So, the one who is finally going to lose, it's our, it's us. And the one who is going to succeed, it's us as well. Yeah. So being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are with the Al-Hafim. You are with the protector. You understand? You are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are small and you are walking with your parent, you feel like nobody can touch you. Even if your parent is, your, your father is weak or something, or small or something like that. But when you just go with your father, you feel like, mashallah, I'm very strong. Nobody can safe, defeat me. Safe. I'm safe, right? Safe. And you know the story. SubhanAllah, one day they asked one, one child. He was playing in, in, the, in the aircraft while it's flying. And another elder person, he was sitting beside him. So he asked him, why are you are playing? Aren't, aren't you afraid? Or something, he said, no, I'm not afraid at all. He said, why? He, he told him, because my father is a pilot. <laughs> you understand? So he, he believed that his father can protect him from anything, subhanAllah. He, he, he feel like that. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He's the creator of my father already. You understand that feeling? Because we don't see Allah. It's, by the way, it's accepted. Abdullah ibn Saud, he said, we do not feel at Darul Akhirah. We cannot feel the judgment day or the, the, the second life, which is al akhirah we cannot feel it because we haven't seen it. You understand? And the Lord is really saying like that, that one of the biggest companions of Prophet Muhammad he said, we cannot touch something, and, and people say like that even right now, based on the knowledge or something, you cannot feel something you cannot touch. If somebody say, say to you, <coughs> do you understand the Halmuz? Do you understand the Halmuz? Do you know the Halmuz? You don't know the Halmuz? Don't, don't you know it's a Ethiopian uh, word? Do, don't you know the Hamus? Yeah, yeah. Hamus. Don't you know this word? Yeah. Don't you know the Hamus? I know it. It's Arabic word. Don't you know it? I don't know. You don't know Hamus? Yeah. Do, do you know the Hamus? It's a Bengali word. <laughs> 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 so nobody knows, right? So Hamus is nothing. There's nothing named Hamus. Hamus just I created right now. <laughs> so you cannot even touch something you don't know. If I don't know the Hamus, so what is Hamus? I don't. I cannot touch it. I don't know it. You understand? So I cannot imagine it. The same, exactly. You have, we haven't seen the Akhirah. It's one of the unseen things. But we believe in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So be patient until the time comes, inshallah. And definitely, Wallahi, it will come. You understand? So this is one of the main understanding as well of the meaning of al hafid And not only the heart, the brain as well. The brain as well. The brain, what can be affected? What can affect the, our brains? Like the misunderstanding of Islam. Some misunderstanding of our deen. Like some people will say, uh, uh, actually you have some shortcomings in your deen. So you ask him, what kind of shortcomings? Uh, SubhanAllah, your prophet has married too many ladies like that. He loves too many. And he is like a pedophilic person. He loves the, pedo you know, the pedophilia. Pedophilia, it comes from pediatrics, which is children. And philic means to love. So pedophilia, it's like marrying to children or something. Because they are saying that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married Aisha anha, she, when she was so young and she was a child. And you don't know the answer, SubhanAllah. So 
if somebody doesn't know anything about that, so too many, you know, suspect, and his deen would come to his head, to his mind. So his brain can be contaminated. That's why one day the Prophet Muhammad he found Umar ibn Khattab is catching a piece of the Bible. So the Prophet Muhammad is afraid about his ummah. He was thinking about his ummah. So he found Umar ibn Khattab is catching a piece of Bible. So he told him, Afillahi shak. He, he was talking strongly to Umar ibn Khattab. Do you suspect in Allah? You, you understand? Until you don't have the clear knowledge about Islam, do not try to contaminate your head. Just be sure you are a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Practice your deen. Try to learn the knowledge. And once you get the knowledge, inshallah, you can be strong enough to compete whoever, to discuss with whoever about that. We call it shubuhat. I don't know how to say it in, in English. Shubuhat. Somebody can help? Like doubts. Doubts or something about Islam, which is not doubt. There is no any doubt in Islam. Islam is very clear. But something that the people can, you know, contaminate your head with it. Claim, something like that. Claims, claims yes, like idda'at, like claims. Somebody claim that something like that. So all of that is the meaning of and the, 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 the deep understanding of the name of Allah Hafiz, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Hafiz. Important point. There's one person, subhanAllah, one sheikh, his name is Abdullah al Qusaymi. That person, he was an author of a book. That book name is As Sara' Bain al Islam wa al the fight between the Islam and the disbelief. You know, the people, the most of the ulama, they said about this book that that, that person, he paid. The cost of Jannah, it means like he made, mashallah, a very nice book to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, 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 will let him go to the Jannah. You understand? There's a meaning. Even the, the Imam of Al-Haram, uh, Al-Makki of Mecca, the Imam, he said a very good words about him. Like he said, Alhamdulillah, we have in our ummah Abdullah al qusaymi He made a very nice book. Look at that person. He is a very big sheikh now. What happened to him? Subhanallah. ثم بعد ذلك بسنوات تفرق أصابع الزي قلبه. After a few years, سبحان الله, the doubt came to his heart. والعياذ بالله, سبحان الله. وتبدأ الشبهات تنسج حول أفكاره بيوت الشك. And the doubt started to get more deeper and deeper inside him. ثم تغدو المسلمات ممكنات. And after that, the true things, which there's no doubt in it, like Allah سبحانه وتعالى is our creator. Somebody has any doubt in that? This is something we say like, 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 how can I say musallamat? How can I say like that? It's like something guaranteed, right? Yeah. Allah has created us. Finish. There is no any word. Oh, full, full stop. Yeah. As for him, some of these kind of guaranteed words started to be doubtful. Mm -hmm. You understand? For that person, who is that person? The one who made the mashallah very nice book and even the ulama, they said about him is so nice person. And after that, he started to make another book against Islam. And he made this book and he named it Hadi Hir Aqlal. This is the chains. He's explaining the Islam as a chaining people. You understand? This is, these are the chains. That was the name of the book in Arabic. He is saying that the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Islam, is a chains. Chaining people from the, to, of, of being freedom, from the, of being free or something. He said like that. Can you imagine that kind of subhanAllah, the, the changing of the heart of people? Can you imagine that? So don't, somebody, wallahi subhanAllah, nobody be proud of himself, subhanAllah. And subhanAllah, and we mentioned, you know, Nabi Allah Ibrahim, one of the Ulul Azmi min Rusul, one of the strongest of the, you know, the Ulul Azmi min Rusul, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Ibrahim, what was the main dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam? He made too many dua in the Quran, but one of these dua, he said, No, this one. No, not this one. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, وَنَجْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ What the meaning of that? Oh Allah, protect me and my children from worshipping the idols. Who was the one who destroyed the idols? Ibrahim alayhi salam himself. But he himself, he still feel and know that without the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I cannot prevent myself. Even I'm the one who destroyed the, the, the idol. I'm afraid that I can one day worship the idol. You imagine the idea? C can you understand? This is the deep meaning of al hafiz from the understanding of the prophets. This is one of the prophets, Ibrahim alayhi salam, one of the strongest prophets. Yeah, another point, subhanAllah. Like we mentioned here. Another person, his name is Bal'an ibn Ba'ura. You know the story of that person? He, is, he was one of the Banu Israel people. That person, Bal'an ibn Ba'ura. 
He has been mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf. So that, that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, based on, there are too many riwayat about that, but the most authentic riwayat, that that person, he was like mustajab dua When he make dua, it will be accepted. And he was one of the Musa, Musa's people. So Musa alayhi salam, he sent him one day to Madian. Madian is a city. So he told him, go and make da'wah to those people. So he went over there. So the king of this place, he gave him a big places and a big gift land and money and everything. So he converted. He left that Musa alayhi salam, that person. And he was mustajab al-da'wah. Once he made dua, he can be accepted, that person. His name is Bal'am ibn Da'wah. Wadhkur, alladhi atainahu. I have to leave Surah Al-A'raf. Wadhkur alladhi atainahu. Fansalakha minha. Yes, Ma'ruf. Ah, but same as Wadhkur. Ayyuh, he is not. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran, the meaning, I forgot the ayah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remember, that person, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him his evidence, فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا He left all of the evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he converted. Subhanallah. In the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِنْ تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثْ أَوْ تَتْرُكُهُ يَلْهَثْ That person, his example, is like the dog. If the dog made a huge effort, he will be like that. Panting, right? And if he made nothing, the same as well. So the dog is doing the same. Whether by doing effort or not doing effort, he is making panting like that. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his name. That person, that person, his name was not mentioned in the Quran, but most of the Sahaba they are saying this ayah has been revealed on that person. So he, you know, in Salakha, in this word, it means like, you know the snake? Snake. The skin of the snake. So sometimes you feel you find this skin, just only skin, and the snake is not here. So he like how can I say like removed his skin or something? You know that, right? Huh? Take off his skin, yeah, take off his, his skin or something. He, uh, like slaughtering or something from his, his skin. Something like that. You know that, subhanAllah. So this is the exact meaning of Fansalafa. So it means he take off the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he has taken off all the evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, he, he just followed the dunya. It's mentioned here, subhanAllah. Like, alhamdulillah, we have just mentioned some examples here about the accident of the cars or something, subhanAllah. When it happens, we always remember, put the seatbelt. Seat to belt, seat to belt, usaki, usaki shtiku dasai, right? Seat to belt, usaki shtiku dasai. So always, uh, before, before going inside, once you close the door, so the car will speak to you, uh, put the seatbelt. So try to remember from now on, inshallah, when your car talks to you and say, please put the seatbelt, try to remember and say to the seatbelt, no, Allah, I will put it, of course, I will take the reasons of life and the reasons of safety, However, you, seatbelt, you are not going to protect me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a protector. Wallahi, say like that. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they say like Al-Qamar. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you see the moon, he taught us, he's talking to the moon and he tell, he's telling him, Rabbi wa Rabbuk Allah. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you see the moon, he's telling him, my Lord and your Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you understand? Just to increase your iman, just to recharge your soul. Yeah, how many angels, how many angels around a person, one person? Somebody know? Two? Two? No, no, no. <laughs> How many angels? No. Yeah. There is one hadith existing in Tafsir ibn Kathir on this ayah. So this ayah says, له معقبات من بين يدينه من خلفه يحفظونه من أمر الله. So, based on Tafsir ibn Kathir, Uthman ibn Affan, he went to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, how many angels around us, around the person? This معقبات, معقبات, so now we have just two positions. Min bayn yadayhi, in his front, or min khalfi, in his back. So now how many of those people, of those angels? Two now. Now we have two, right? Two in the morning, and two in the evening. So now we have four. Huh? Two plus two. So now we have four, right? So let's count for just one shift. Let's say for the morning or evening. So we have, the Prophet Muhammad he replied to Uthman ibn Affan, and he told him, that we have two angels. One angel is the right. They are writing on the person. One angel, one, in, one angel on the right. His name is Raqib, and he is the leader, or let's say, you know, he is Amin on the al shimal. How can I say? Like, he is controlling, let's say, on the left one. His name, the left one, his name is Atid. If somebody made a good deed, it will be written ten, ten hasanat. If somebody made a bad deed, the one on the left, he will ask the one on the right, should I write it? He is his leader, right? He is his head. Should I write it? So he will tell him, no, wait. Maybe he will stop it. Until he make it three. Once he did like that, so that angel will tell to that one, write it down. Arahana Allah min. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, relieve us from him. 
you understand subhanallah the angel making dua with the person himself so now we have two people two uh, sorry, two angels two, those two and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned in the in the rest of the hadith we have two over our two eyes so now four and those muakkibat one in front and one in the back so total six six right now and one over the tongue seven, seven. seven. and two over the two lips nine eight and nine, nine. right and one more, I, I, I forgot him, where is he existing? That was a long hadith of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم So I'll try to remember it, maybe while talking I'll remember him. So for every person he has 10 angels around him per day. And 10 other, other angels, they will come to him per night. They will like exchanging or something. So can you imagine the number of the protectors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us? And just only based on that meaning, له معقبات من بين يديه ومن خلفه يحفظونه. What the meaning of this word? Look. What the name of Allah? Al Hafiz, right? Look at this word in, in, in this is a verb. يحفظونه. It comes from يحفظ حفيظ. So the same, right? It's almost same. So يحفظونه means protect him. And Al Hafiz is the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So who is this? لهم معقبات من بين يديه. The angels in front of him. ومن خلفه and from his back. يحفظونه من أمر الله. They are protecting him from the destiny of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You understand? But once the destiny of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala comes. They will stop. And finally, the person will die. You understand? Maybe some crashes. We have seen that too many on the YouTube or something. Some car crashes. And you will find the, maybe the, you know, this is the, the how can I say, the airbag. So the airbag will explode in front of the person. And the, all the, the glass shield or the windshield will be broken. And everything will come, you know, to his face. If you see that car from up, and the car is already something like that, you know, from back and, and front. Something like that. So definitely, when you approach, you would say that person would be cut into pieces. But finally, you find the person is outside making a phone call. And you're asking, who is that? Oh, the car of this person, sir? He said, Alhamdulillah, I came out. How? How did he come out? It's like that. I think you, you have seen something like that, maybe yeah, on yeah, YouTube yeah. or something. SubhanAllah, this is the angels, maybe. SubhanAllah, nobody knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Hafiq. Even right now, SubhanAllah, look now, we are breathing normally, right? No heart attack. Nobody has any pain in his stomach or something. If you feel like you go, you'd like to go to the toilet, you will go normally. It's everything is smooth from front and back. Everything is nice. It will like you know, automatically it's going, right? No control, no any buttons or something. Everything is going like that. Who is doing it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa protecting us. But when the time is coming, the heart will stop, the kidney will stop, the liver will stop. And finally, all of that is reasons. Just are, just are reasons for, for the person to die. So this is the, the deep meaning of the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadith. Even the animals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create them and live them like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave every animal the way of protection. Like the snake, he has like this kind of venom or something, like this poison. Like also the, the scorpion, he has some weapons. Like, like that, like the unicorn, he has like this something he can protect himself like that. Like the, like the big buffalo, he has like this horn that can penetrate or can do something, he can stab or something like a big animal, like maybe uh, lions or something. So all the creatures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a way of protection. That's all of that, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Habib. Even the finery, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna Allahi amin. So if you'd like to be among those people who are being protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be among the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna Allaha, that Allah indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yudafi'u ani ladina amanu. Yudafi' means defend for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending us, the people who are believing in Him, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one, one example from our Sunnah. Somebody remember? We have one example from our Sirah and another example from the Quran. Surah, the name of Surah, Surah. It has one example of a group of people, a group of young people who left yeah. the, huh? yeah. Surah yeah. the cave, Surah Al-Kaf. So this is one example. So the people can see them. They are inside the cave and this cave is open. There's no any doors. And the people can come, subhanAllah. But when they come and look at them, they feel frightened and they leave. So Allah protected them 300 years and, and, and more, and nine. And we have another example in the seerah. So. Seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, in the Ghar al -Fawd. SubhanAllah, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went with his friend, Abu Bakr and Sadiq, so they went together and they, they, subhanAllah, the enemies, they were in front of them. The disbelievers of Quraysh, they were in front of them. SubhanAllah, the, the Abu Bakr is telling his, his uh, uh, friend, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, if somebody look at his beneath or something, like at his leg or something, he will see us. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, what do you think about two? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the third. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the third, by protecting them. 
You understand the meaning, subhanAllah. So finally, we have one person, Sheikh. His name is Abdul Rahman al Samit. Somebody know that person? Nobody knew about that person. He's a Kuwaiti person. So Abdul Rahman al Samit, mashallah, most of the middle of Africa, they embraced Islam on his hands. He's like a Mu'asad person, like a person living in, in the era, in our era, subhanAllah. He's a Kuwaiti person, he left Kuwait, and he was so rich person, and he left for da'wah, and he went to Africa. And he was making da'wah over there in Africa, subhanAllah, in the middle of all diseases. And he didn't fear anything, subhanAllah, and he got fever, and he got stabbed by, by some animals or something over there in Africa. <laughs> all of that for the sake of Allah, subhanAllah, and da'wah. And he didn't die. Finally, he died on bed. Like that, subhanAllah. So he didn't, he didn't die like any, any other way of death or something. So the life is once, and we will live it once, and we will die once, subhanAllah. So he believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hafiyu. <coughs> and you remember, subhanAllah, Yunus alayhi salam, we mentioned that, subhanAllah. He was, subhanAllah, inside the three darkness, the darkness of the, the, the abdomen of the, of the hood, and the darkness of the sea, and the darkness of the night, subhanAllah. And even though, he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum nadhalimi He remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a protector So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him and sent him out And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planted one tree at him Subhanallah, shadra min pumpkin, you know that? Subhanallah That's why subhanallah, we can make this dua Allah mahfadna bi hifdik Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us by your protection Wa kla'na bi ri'ayatik And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know like, how can I say like Take, take care of us ya Allah وَاجْعَلْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِينَا وَمِنْ خَلْفِنَا وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِنَا وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِنَا وَمِنْ فَوْقِنَا وَمِنْ تَحْتِنَا حِفْظًا بِنْكَ تُنَجِّنَا بِهِ مِمَّا نَخْشَى وَنَبْحَادًا And Ya Allah protect us from, like we mentioned, from front of us and our back and right side and left side and up side and down side تُنَجِّنَا بِهِ مِمَّا نَخْشَى وَنَبْحَادًا To protect us and to save us, Ya Allah, from anything we are afraid of. Subhanallah, this is the meaning of that dua. So, that's everything about Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, now you did, did you understand the meaning of Al-Hafiz, you will remember that name, right? Inshallah. So try to remember that, try to live on that. When, when something happened at your home, with your wife, with your children, with something, uh, everywhere, try to remember that name. If SubhanAllah, one, one child fall down and it was very close to hit the corner of a steel or something, so it, can, it may penetrate his head or something, will open his skin. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him, he just like one centimeter away. It happened with all our children, SubhanAllah. And even if it cut his, his skin, it didn't go inside, subhanAllah. There's no, nothing happened to the brain. So you understand that meaning? So it happened with all of us, Allah, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. You still have energy? Yeah. Yeah, alhamdulillah, it's a good thing. Okay, we will try, we will try to make it very quick, this part. Maybe we will not continue, inshaAllah, we can continue the next part. Today, inshaAllah, the next part is living with the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa So in this chapter, in that book, we have 14 hadith talking about the features of the Prophet Muhammad Ten of them authentic ahadith and four of them weak ahadith. So we are going, I have just selected only the ten the authentic ahadith from that sahih, sahih al-Tirmidhi. So the first, we are not going to read the whole hadith. Muhammad, as I click We are not going to read the whole hadith, okay? We are just are going to take the features of the Prophet Muhammad and I highlighted them in red, as you can see. So the Prophet Muhammad appears in that hadith, he neither very tall, no short. So he was not very much tall and very much short. Okay? The second point. His skin was neither pale white nor tawny or something. So he was not that totally white or totally black. And we mentioned last time he was like white with, tinged with redness, right? Like abiyat, abiyat means white, tinged with redness, like has some red in his face. His hair, about his hair, the Prophet Muhammad's hair, it was neither crisply curled like not curly, or nor length. Length means like smooth or lease, like that. It was not like that, so it was middle, in between. Finally, the end of 60, the, the, at the end of the life of Prophet Muhammad when he was 60 years old, was fewer than 20 white hairs. So he kept, mashallah, black hair until the end of his life. Just only 20, 20 white hairs over his head. So that is the first hadith. So the second hadith is explaining also the Features of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Try now to imagine the Prophet Muhammad. You understand? When you see someone, ah, he, he was looking almost like him. You understand? When, now I, I'm going to describe to you how he was walking. Based on what I learned, alhamdulillah, the Shaykh, he was teaching us how he is walking. But he is like imitating how he's walking. Nobody knows because we haven't seen him. And there's no any movie or something showing that. But they are, they are 
they tried to act based on the hadith. So the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he was medium height. So he was not too tall and not too short. He was like medium height. And neither tall nor short, like we mentioned. Handsome physic. What the meaning of handsome physic? Like physically fit. When you see him, he's not like, he doesn't have like, like a belly or something. And he doesn't have like a big hunch or something like that. Like we can see some people who are not taking care of food or something like, like us, like me. You, you understand? He was like a like straight person, like physically, physically fit. When you see him, you feel like a sport man or something. He would go to swimming or something like, like, like you, you understand, right? Like physically fit person. Uh, his hair was not, ah, we, we mentioned it. His hair was neither crisply curled nor smooth. Same, right? We mentioned it. It's another hadith, by the way. There's another hadith from different people. When he walked, he used to stride confidently. When he walked, he's like, you know, step on the ground confidently, like strong person. He's not afraid of something, something or just moving like a hesitant, a hesitant person. No, he's moving confidently. The third hadith. Uh, neither curly, we mentioned the hair. Neither curly, we already mentioned it. Medium height, we mentioned. Yes, throat, arida min kawain. You're saying it like it up here. Rajulan marbu'a. Marbu'a means it's like, you know, like, like the chest is like that. Do not try to imagine any bodybuilder person. No, he was not like, like this. No, no, but I mean like, like his chest was broad. You understand? His shoulder was broad. Like from here to here, it was a little broad. Not too much broad like an alien or something. No, he's like a human, normal person. But like, mashallah, perfect person. And the perfection is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, luxuriant hair reaching the loops of his ear. So the hair was reaching to the loops, this loops of his ear. So his hair, when it goes down, when it becomes longer, so it reaches to that part. You understand? Uh, wearing a red suit of clothes. At, the, at that time, at that time, that person, that Sahabi have seen him, and he, he described him. At that time, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was putting, we call it red burda yamaniya. We call it burda yamaniya. Yamaniya means Yemen. You know Yemen. Burda means like clothes. So it's like a clothes from Yemen, and it used to be one, Line white and one line red. One line, one li one line wow. red and one line white. Somebody can say it the same yeah. times quickly. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. One line white, one line red, <laughs> like, like that, like that. So when you see it from afar, you feel you feel it's like red. My so red, it's one and one, one and one, one and one like that. And this is we call it Burda Yemeni, and it was one of the most expensive clothes. It came to the Prophet Muhammad as a gift from Al Yemen to him. I have never seen, look, look, that's a Sahabi, mashallah, he said, I have never seen anything more beautiful than him. I haven't seen anything more beautiful than the Prophet Muhammad yes, 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 yes. So very quickly, inshallah, his hair flowing below the ears, like we mentioned, comes to the loops of the ear. Wearing red suit of clothes, again. Uh, some hair touching his shoulder. Sometimes they, so now we have to, now you become a knowledgeable person. You understand? When you are talking about the Prophet, you can say to any person, if, if let's say, the topic of the hair came in front of you. So you say, no, no, I hear two hadith. In Sahih Tirmidhi, one of them they're saying that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes to the loop, and the other one say the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam touched the shoulder. <coughs> nice, now you have your knowledge. And you know the, the source. The source is this book. For the At Tirmidhi, you know this name, right? At Tirmidhi, I know Tirmidhi. So you know that. So now you have the knowledge, subhanAllah. Broad shoulder, again, and neither short nor tall. He is not short, not tall. Neither tall nor short. Uh, sturdy hands and feet. Yeah, this is another one. It's a big in size. Like strong and big in size, hands and feet. So his, his feet and his hands was big in size. Uh, stout head and limbs. You know, his head was a little bigger than, than, than other people, like like other people, but, but bigger when you see, like a big head. And even the limbs, his, his hands, his two, two arms and his two legs, big ones. Also, do not try to imagine someone alien or something. He's a normal person, but he's like, Everything is perfect, like adjusted, you understand? Do not take just one hadith and try to imagine the Prophet. No, it's not like that. You understand? That's why we have to read the whole features of the Prophet. Uh, and again, subhanAllah, when he walked, he inclined. Yes, this is how he was walking. Uh, now, inshallah, I will try to imitate how he's walking. When he walked, he inclined forward. Look at this. As if he were descending a downward slope. Somebody can make, can imitate it just from the understanding, before, before seeing me. Somebody can imitate this explanation? You know that uh, at the IKEA, there is one bridge, uh, one bridge, right? Uh, bridge, right? Uh, yeah. Bridge, uh, go up and go down. Can you act as if you are going down right now over this bridge? Somebody can try to do that in front of us now? Yes, please, somebody. Uh, otherwise, I will choose by myself. 
<laughs> uh, somebody would like, we need someone to imitate as if he's going down from the bridge. Uh, who would come? <laughs> yes, come, come. yes, show us how you, you will go down out of this. Eto, you are like Japanese. Eto, okay. No, this is one a broken leg. One person. Has a broken leg. <laughs> this is one person has a broken leg and he's going to the hospital. Also, this is like a robot. Yes. Yes, yeah, Tariq. Yeah. Yeah, Tariq. Huh? It's like look, look, look at that. <laughs> you understand? Like that, he's like what? going down. You, you will not imagine that. Yeah. Look, it's like that. You understand? Like that, as if he's like going down something, like descending from something, and that is the normal, the normal walk of the Prophet Muhammad. Even in a different, in different hadith, the, the, the Sahaba says we cannot catch the Prophet Muhammad while walking. Like while he was walking, he's always fast. Uh, yes, in, in advance. So this is even the features of the person who has. Like motivated and inspired person. This is the normal feature of that person, subhanAllah. Uh, in those with a grand and impressive mouth. Yes, his mouth was a big mouth. And uh, what is ashkal al ashkal al ayn? He replied, it means long in the slit of the eyes. You know the opening of the eye? It, it's a little longer, like, like not like Japanese, but it's like the opening, the slit opening of the eyes, it's, it's longer. And finally, in those with a lean heel. He's, he's, you know those people who has a heel yeah. that is very thick like that. You feel like there is no this articulation. I have seen those people while, while you pray or something. You can see some people who has like like one leg like that. It's, it, you know, as if, as if there is no... Straight. It's yeah. like straight like that. You, you know, you feel like the muscle, it goes directly down. There is no this kind of <laughs> defining, you know. So the Prophet Muhammad his heel, it was very defined and very thin. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Look, Tari has taken it in a different way. Now he's thinking, how is this feature comes on my on myself? Like now he's he's trying to imagine himself. Also, the Prophet Muhammad he has what's called al masraba. You know al masraba or the meaning of al masraba? Maybe you can check yourself later, inshallah. Al masraba, you know the hair. Hair comes from here, in the middle of the. It starts from that part until the. Uh, the navel. The navel. What they call it? Huh? Belly button. The belly button, yes, that's right. Yes, this 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 point. So it comes down from here like a hair goes down like that and it was very long. So Tawil al Masrada, it was mentioned like that. So he has a long hair that comes from this, this part and goes down like that. So that was one of the features of the Prophet Muhammad as well. Was the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala messenger like that sword? Somebody's asking, with the face of the Prophet Muhammad as well, is like sword? You know, like very thin like that, you know, like this sword. So he said, sword. So he said, no, it was rather than like the moon. So, tadweer, kind of which he tadweer, means like his round. face was like circular or round, yes, yeah. round like that. Yeah. He said his face was like the moon, not like that sword. You know, the sword is like very, very thin like that, like triangular shape. It was not like that. Maybe that is the last hadith. So, uh, what is was white? Abu Huraira, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger was white. Ah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, color, it was white. As if he were fashioned from silver, with loosely curled hair, with loosely curled hair. Look, he has two. He was not curly, and it was not loose. So now Abu Huraira he used a different word. He said loosely curled. It means like between them. You understand? And this is the explanation of the person. Like if I ask Mamun, how can you describe Abdul Aziz's brother? So I'm going to say his face like round, and maybe like he has like a beard like like that. You, you, you would explain, you are going to explain. And if I go to another person, Jahid brother, can I explain Abdul Aziz? So you say, his face is like little long, but round, but little longer. You, you understand? Yeah. So it's a re relative explanation, relative description of the Prophet. What is the benefit of describing the Prophet or understanding the feature of him? Why do we study them? Like imagine the, the, the Prophet Muhammad on the feature? Yeah, it's a good way, of course. Maybe you well, must find out, make it easy for us inshallah to see him in the, while sleeping or something. Well, one of the students, he came to his teacher, his sheikh, and he asked him, Yeah, Imam, I would like to see the Prophet Muhammad. I hear. The reason, right, why you are studying that? Yes, definitely. Maybe he is perfect even in the features. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the 
and met our professors and spark a person. Yeah, that's right. Maybe they're one of the reasons as well. There are too many deep meaning of, of studying the features of the Prophet Muhammad But let me give you that example. All of us would like to see him, right? So one of the students, he, came, he listened to his teacher, his sheikh, saying during the verse that I'm, I'm seeing the Prophet Muhammad every day in my dream. So soon after the verse, he went to him, Yeah, Imam, you said that you are seeing the Prophet Muhammad every day in your dreams. I would like to see him. So he said, you cannot see him by yourself. You have to come to my home and you will see him at my home. He said, okay, I will come to you. So he went to him and he feeded him. At the end of the day, he feeded him and he gave him a lot of food. And when he gave him that a lot of food, he added a lot of salt. Salt, too much salt. Maybe you hear that, that story or something. So he added a lot of salt. And that boy is so polite. He cannot say, ah, Sheikh, I cannot eat or something. He's so polite. So he's eating. Once it's finished, he's adding more. Too much salt. And he's eating. Until SubhanAllah, he became very thirsty. So by the end of the food, he told him, yeah, Sheikh, I'm, I'm very thirsty. Can you give me a water or something? He said, no, we don't have water here. I'm sorry. You have to sleep. And inshallah, after Fajr prayer, inshallah, we can go out together and we can find the water for you. So the boy, he slept. And he waked up at Fajr time. So the Sheikh, he asked him, did you see the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said, no. He said, okay, what did you see in your dream? He said, I found too many seas and rivers and rain like that. He said, because you slept. <laughs> yeah, he told him, because you slept overthinking about water. the water. water. So you have seen it. So if you, as well, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perform the good deeds, and at the same time, overthink about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and keep your mind working about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day you will see it. Like, like that. I think then that was the last hand. Uh, maybe the last one. Yeah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, looks like which Prophet? He looks like which Prophet? Ibrahim. 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 Yeah, that mentioned here in that hadith. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and the nearest, uh, I also saw Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and the nearest I have seen in resemblance to him, in your companion, himself, in, in, in uh, Sahibukum, is your companion. So the, the one who was very close to the Prophet Ibrahim was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maybe, yeah, maybe that is the last time. He was white, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was white, handsome, and medium size. So that is the conclusion. And this is a description of Haddathana Subiyar ibn Wakiya. Yeah, Samiyat al Adab Tufaydi, Yaqul. So that person, Adab Tufaydi, he said that he said, have seen the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It means that everybody died. And he is the last one who is, have seen the Prophet. You understand what I mean? Like, I'm the only one who's seen the Prophet, and everyone has seen the Prophet with me already passed away. Mm -hmm. So when I die, nobody would be seeing the Prophet. You understand? It would be just only a tabi'in who hasn't seen the Prophet. You understand? Mm -hmm. He said like that. Maybe we can read in English. I saw the Prophet, bless him and give him peace, and there is no one left on the face of the earth who has seen him apart from me. So it means he's the last one last time. passed last away time. from the companions. Last time. Yes, and he said, describe him for me. Somebody asked him from a tabi'in, from the followers. He asked him, describe him for me. So he said, simply, he was white. And he's not white. Like we mentioned previously, we have, take, we have to take the whole hadith together. So he was not pure white. He was white, painted with red. That's the first point. And he said, handsome, and it's true. He was like moon. And finally he said, medium sized. He is like not tall, not tall and not short. So it's correct. So everything like nice. Alhamdulillah. That was the, it's impossible to go through. So, and, and we, will, we will drop number three and number four, inshallah. But we will take number five, which is the Islamic issue. Okay. So, Muhammad, you already prepared something. Maybe within two, three minutes, you are playing some, right? Okay, please. Okay. Just in two, three minutes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. If you are a donative person, which country are going to support? Which you, which country are going to donate for? To donate to? Ukraine. Ukraine? Yes. Somebody in Russia? Ukraine. Ukraine. Ukraine? Ukraine? Yes. Russia. Most of yeah, like most of the people they choose to Ukraine. Okay. But like uh, I saw in Yom Super, like they are uh, like 
like there was a post please donate your coins in this like this post so there's nobody think that uh, why war like America and Iraq and uh, Russia and Syria are never making any like uh, feelings 